Hi, my name is Daryl Peterson and I'm the manager of the Applications Engineering Department here at MicroMeasurements. This afternoon I'd like to take a few minutes and show you an example of a full bridge. This one happens to be for bending. If you look closely you'll see that we've got a cantilevered beam where it's fixed on the left hand side and a load or force is applied to the right hand side given as P. If you look closely you'll see that we've got four strain gauges installed on this cantilevered beam back over closer to the fixed end. Uh, the gauges are two on the top and two on the bottom. They're all effectively positioned at the same distance away from the fixed end of the beam. And we've got two on the top, two on the bottom, and then you'll see the Wheatstone Bridge where we wire those all in there together. Uh, if you look closely, you'll see that R1 and R3 are on the top and R2 and R4 are on the bottom. Now, when we apply load at point uh, given as P, we're going to find that uh, these four strain gauges contribute effectively the same magnitude of signal. Let's assume we push hard enough to produce a thousand microstrain. We use a thousand because that's an easy number. So if R1 and R3 see a thousand microstrain of tension, R4 and R2 would see a thousand microstrain of compression. We take that and connect it into our Wheatstone bridge and you'll notice, if you look closely at the bridge, you'll see P plus and P minus for the power coming in, S minus and S plus for the signal coming out. Uh, big E represents, or capital E represents the excitation supply voltage to the circuit, and small E sub O represents the signal that's coming out. So we wire it such that R1 and R3 are in opposite arms, and R2 and R4 are also opposite of each other as well. The reason for that is with a Wheatstone bridge, like changes in adjacent arms electrically subtract. Like changes in opposite arms electrically add. So between P plus and S minus, we've got R1, which is, let's assume it's a tensile strain. R3 is also tensile. R2 and R4 are compressive. So if I get a thousand microstrain in R1 in tension and a compressive strain of minus a thousand at R4, those two effectively are going to end up adding together to double the output. And now we've got four gauges instead of just the two. So when we do that and we wire it correctly, for every thousand microstrain of strain that I actually have in this cantilever beam, I get 4,000 microstrain of output. So in this particular case, this circuit is four times more sensitive than what you would find if you just had a single gauge mounted on this cantilever beam. So in summary, if we assume the gauges are all the same and they're mounted on the same material, of course, it should compensate for our thermal output because as everything changes the same in a Wheatstone bridge, effectively they null each other out and the output stays zero. Uh, this particular circuit is very sensitive to bending loads, but it would cancel axial, side, and torsional loads assuming we do a good job of gauge placement and positioning on the beam. Uh, the number of active arms in this case, N, is equal to 4 because all four gauges are contributing the same amount. They're just opposite in sign. Two are in tension, two are in compression. And the indicated output ends up being four times greater, meaning that we get an output, an electrical signal output, that's four times the amount that we would get from a single strain gauge. And oftentimes in strain gauge measurements, it's rare that you're dealing with, with too much signal. Most of the time, maybe it's not enough. And this is a way that you could increase your output by a factor of four. If you'd like to find out more about a full bending bridge, take a look at our website at www.micro-measurements.com. Thank you.